You see, sorry about that. Uh, man, you started recording. So sorry, guys, we we're just doing a bit of a sound check. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, and uh, I shall also present my um, presentation slide right there. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second, guys. I'm just trying this slide over the uh, presentation slide. It's just not doing that for me. Okay, great. I have done that. Okay there, guys. Let's just begin. Thank you very much, guys, for attending uh, today's uh, TickMill uh, Live Market Outlook uh, webinar here. And I uh, would like to welcome and thank you guys for uh, attending this webinar. Today is the 6th of March, uh, 2018. And uh, we'll be going over a couple of um, trade ideas uh, as well as answer your questions on it. We'll be looking at uh, Tickmill's uh, MT4 account, MT4 platform, sorry, onto the live charts as well. So it is a live uh, environment. Let me uh, just answer some questions there, guys. Give me a second. Brilliant. Everybody could see and hear me. Great. Okay, that's great. So uh, before anything else, if you guys don't mind, let me uh, just read this very short uh, disclaimer like right here, and we shall then begin. Um, trading financial products such as uh, CFDs on margin carries a high degree of risk and is not suitable for all investors. Losses can exceed the initial investment. Please ensure you fully understand the risk and take appropriate care to manage your risk. Okay, so that's it, and uh, we shall then begin. I uh, will present you the um, MT4 account right here, and uh, we'll be going through a couple of trade ideas like I've mentioned. Uh, we'll start off with um, the USD JPY on your one hour chart, but right after that, we'll uh, visit uh, Euro USD as well. Uh, but I'll be <clears throat> going around with uh, questions on your current trades as well. Okay, we want to look into a couple of things. Uh, before anything else, um, I uh, I would like to say that I, I uh, mix up both both fundamentals and technicals, okay? So uh, I do actually uh, rely on uh, what I hear on the news, uh, basically just to look into whether or not the current trend of the instrument, <coughs> excuse me, the current trend of the instrument would be strengthened or not. Uh, so I'm always looking for whether or not a particular trend uh, will be from strong to stronger, okay, whether it's on the upside or the downside. Now, uh, here, for example, I'll be demonstrating um, the use of, uh, you know, um, uh, patterns as well as the drawings of uh, properly drawing support resistance zones. And uh, lastly, but not least, is um, entering your trade, exiting trades um, by the use of uh, psychological numbers as well. So here, for example, very, um, very quickly, it's something that we need to do a revision on every time we meet uh, online. Let me just uh, check on some questions that I may have here. Sorry about that. Okay, that's it. All right, so uh, one of the first uh, things is, uh, you know, to, to cluster up at least three time frames, and I'm uh, applying the three lines that you see for those who you for those of you guys who actually attended today for the first time, um, I always use the application. I mean, I always would uh, insert the three 
exponential moving averages, which are the uh, 50, the uh, 50 exponential moving average, the, two, the 100, as well as the 200. So these are the three, but I only use them to um, uh, determine the trend. So what I usually do is to look into the position of candles, as well as the way the three lines are actually moving. Now, this is what I do very, very simply. I pick three time frames, and these are the one hour, the four hour, and the daily. You could all, always pick uh, shorter time frames, but the cluster of three, like five minutes, 15 minutes, and 30 minutes as well. But what you want to do is you want to look for a match in trend. So how do we actually determine the trend uh, based on the three exponential moving averages? Very simple. What you would like to do is to look into whether or not the candles, current candles like you see here, are they mostly under, are they actually trading lower? <coughs> Excuse me, are they trading lower and under the three lines okay that's number one number two you need to look at whether or not the three lines are following the current trend so if you've got majority of candles like you see are trading on the downside you've got a majority of the candles are the bearish candles as you can see then you want the three lines to actually follow the direction meaning to be pointing downwards to towards the floor now what you can see here is that i've got candles right here on the one hour chart but the thing about the candles is that it's just too close to the three lines. It's not trading under the three lines. As you can see, like here, you've got one candle, two candles, uh, and more candles just, just uh, diving through, diving downwards under all three lines. And you see that the three lines here are pointing downwards and they're not entangled or touching each other in any way. Okay, so you need them to be separated. Okay, the three of them, and you need the um, the majority of candles to be under all the three lines, and then you can actually say that the bias is to the downside or the trend is bearish. Okay, but here currently I'm not able to say that confidently on the one hour chart for what's happening with the candles now. Okay, so the candles now, as you can see, is just too close. Or now, if I if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the current candle has entered the three lines area and it's not trade it's not tra trading sorry like all these other lines like all, all these other candles previously like the one that, that that i have showed you here okay so you you see that the candle now it's actually appreciating you've got a bullish candle and it's pointing upwards it's it's trending or trading upwards and it's entering the confusion zone right here now i like to call the um the uh, area of the three lines right here to actually be sort of an uncertain type zone okay now the reason as well is the way the three lines are moving they're they're actually moving sideways so if they are moving sideways it's not really a good sign in terms of clarity of trend so it is moving sideways um it's hinting uncertainty at at the moment for the usd jpy one hour chart so you need to match that you need to have three time frames that matches with a strong trend so what i mean by that is that if you've got one hour four hour and daily showing you most of the candles under all three lines or above all three lines uh, and all three uh, time frames matches then you have got a bit of a clear sort of uh, trend direction and you've got more time uh, to actually take that trade okay but if you've only got one match uh, not match but you've only got one time one time frame showing you that it's under all three lines or above and then the other two doesn't actually match then you're actually in a sort of a risk uh, whereby the clarity of trend is not there and you might have a low probability of entering that trade or probably low probability of success and high risk to enter that trade okay so i hope that's clear for you guys so in other words if the market is in doubt meaning that the candles are trade are trending or trading sideways and they're inside in within the zone and they're not far under or far above all three lines that means the market is in doubt if the market is in doubt it's probably best for the trader like yourself and me to actually stay out as well so market in doubt it's best to stay out okay that's the tip that i would give it to you um, as a trader uh, because this would then, uh, you know, help you uh, to actually draw out patterns or start uh, trading it in a high probability, uh, low risk manner. Okay, I hope that's clear. So we've got one hour right there. Now, if I go onto the four hour chart, this is still the USDJPY that we're looking at. Now we're looking at the four hour chart. Now we have got some appreciation of price. 
coming downwards. You've got a three lines pointing downwards, which is really good. One of the tips uh, that I would actually give it to you today as well is um, if you could always start off with a zoom out manner first, okay? When you zoom out, you could see the whole big picture. You could see that there's a huge, uh, you know, big, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, significant trend to the downside. You can see that that fall has started from way at the top here, and you see how the... Um, the um, reversals have actually respected finding resistance at either one of these three moving averages as well. And then they're heading downwards now. And you've got the candles when you zoom in, okay? You can then see the USD, JPY, and the four hour chart prefers or having the bias to the downside why it's it's found some resistance right there and then it's heading down and you've got another resistant recent one there and then more resistant here and then you've got the dominance of uh, bearish candles as you can see you have got candles going um, you've got a big uh, fall right here and then the appreciation is that much power but then as it it is, comes down again the appreciation start to get less and less that means the upward movement has actually got less and less so that that actually gives you a hint that the dominance are by the sellers okay uh, the bears so the bears are taking charge as you can see and then you've got less and less uh, sort of bullish candle or strong bullish candles but you've got more bearish type candles powerful ones you know uh, um, elongated uh, bearish candles that gives you the signal or hints you to the uh, power of the bears at the moment. So this is what's happening at the moment in the market, okay? So this is for the USD JPY on the four hour chart. And you can see that now we are trading at 106.08. So that's uh, $1 uh, to uh, 106 um, Japanese yen, okay? So this is what we're trading at. Now I also look to the right, to the left. So to the right, I usually look at the price now and I would like to look at whether or not it's close to any psychological level. Now on the 106, because this is the USD JPY, you're looking at the last two digits, not the last two digits, the two digits right after the decimal point. So I'm looking at 106.07. I would omit or um, just disregard the last digit, the, the very last digit and make that 106.08, let's say. So it's that 08 that I'm looking at. So if I'm looking at um, prices going downwards and imagine that prices would actually go down much more, let's say, because it may be, um, bias to the bearish side of it then if it does actually go down it'll probably go down to 106 and uh, 0 0.07 and down to uh, 0605 and all that right so once it does actually go down it would actually reach the closest psychological level which is the 106.00 so 0, 0.00 is your psychological level so it could be uh four sets of psychological levels okay it could be the 0 0.00 uh 0 0.20 0 0.50 and 0.80 so these are the four sets of psychological numbers. So uh, these psychological numbers, for example, if it is 106.00, let's imagine that it's actually gone down lower and it's reached the 106.00, that may actually be a significant or major psychological level. Okay, let me repeat that, 10600. So let's say your intention as a trader is to take a sell position. Let's say you've done the, the whole groundworks, uh, due diligence, of analyzing the market and you've came up with the um, uh, with the decision of uh, wanting to sell the market now in terms of price using price levels itself it's probably best uh, to look into whether or not you are selling under the psychological numbers at least by 10 pips so uh, if I were to look into 106.06 now as a price, as it goes lower, it would reach the 10600 psychological number. So I wouldn't be entering a sale, let's say, because it's not at the right price. The right pr price would be 106. 0 0.00 and under it okay so it, sh it should be under 10600 which would give you a better price a selling price would be 105.90 instead so 105.90 would be under at least by 10 pips or so under the 106.00 psychological level the reason is because once you actually consider entering or exit um, at the psychological levels whether it's the 20 the 00 the 50 or the 80 these are areas that reversals could actually happen within 10 pips or so hence the reason it wouldn't be an ideal 
entry or exit price too close to the psychological numbers. So when it comes to psychological numbers, it's probably for you to sell at least 10 pips under any one of the psychological numbers that is closest to the current price. Or if you are if you would wish to buy, then the buy price would ideally be 10 pips above the psychological numbers. We'll get to that as well on the other examples that we have today for you based on the live markets and the other uh, instruments. So here, for example, we're looking at all these uh, things. Uh, all the uh, criteria of a sort of a, like a downtrend bias at the moment for USDJPY. So as we look at this whole angle as well, you just have got many touch points, resistance here, resistance and resistance. So that actually um, gives you the hint that there are more, you know, uh, high, lower highs and lower lows. So that lower highs, lower lows, you got high there and then a lower high, lower high, lower, much, much lower highs. That is just giving you that um, bias to the downside. The momentum is looking like it's picking up to the downside as opposed to the upside. Okay, so let's match that four hour and see whether or not when you go onto the daily chart you have got that strength of trend being backed up by the daily chart okay when you look into the daily chart uh, what you could also do is that you could uh, look into one hour as let's say your short term your four hours your medium term and your daily is your long term now the thing as well is with uh, in within the forex market i mean trading with uh, tick mail uh, as well and you are looking into uh, wanting to actually be successful um, and the success of uh, forex trading should actually never just be um, reliant upon just strategies because any strategies for example no matter how good they are they probably uh, would entail only about 10 percent of the entire process of successfully trading forex uh, the remaining like 30 plus percent would actually be um, you know your uh, your um, money management and risk management side of things, you know, your lot sizing, and that's something we cover uh, on uh, Thursdays as well, the tutorial side of it, which was last week. And the uh, upcoming one this coming Thursday would be going into a different topic as well, but all of it should actually relate to help you come up with a, you know, a good approach to the market and also to include it in your trade plan. So, this is basically really important for you to, to understand that uh, 30 plus percent would be the money risk management side. And then I would say more, more than 50 plus percent, almost 60 percent would actually entail the psychology uh, of trading and the psychology of, um, you know, understanding how you could be, you know, um, mentally sort of balance in, in in understanding how you actually balance up your approach you know uh, as well so uh, that that is basically the key ingredient uh, as well to to encourage discipline and patience okay so we'll go to that much more in the tutorial section upcoming so at this moment of time when you go into the usd jpy on the daily chart so it's just giving you more uh, bias to the downside as you can see this is quite a clear sort of downtrend as you can see the uh, majority of the candles are dominated by bearish candles and majority of candles are trading quite far off quite far under all three lines as well and the three lines are not touching each other this end here maybe a little bit at the you know previously there but then it's breaking out uh, you know, it's having sort of like split ends and split ends are good. They don't, they're not supposed, in in trading split ends are good, okay? So here, they're not touching each other, you know, they're not entangled to one another. That's a good sign. And we're looking at it pointing downwards. So on the daily chart, it's quite a, a clear buildup of downtrend here with the USD JPY on the daily chart. Okay, so here uh, we could say that on the daily chart and long uh, term side of it, you've got a strength to the downside. As we go back onto the four hour chart right here for USD JPY, it may be just building up right here. And as you go into the one hour chart, um, it's just a little bit unpredictable, maybe awaiting for a breakout kind of thing. So uh, if it does actually go up, um, you know, just, you know, traveling or trending sideways here, but once it breaks out under the three lines, that would then match up four hour and daily to actually be, you know, stronger to the downside. So at this stage, it's probably not uh, the right time or ripe enough time to actually enter the trade for the USD JPY as the trend is really not clear and the price is not really right for the selling to go on as well. 
okay so uh, why not we go on to lower time frame let's see what happens on lower time frame meaning if you've got lower equity level you know 100 to 500 sort of uh, it's probably best for you to you know when you do your analysis and draw patterns or support resistance zones or lines it's probably best for you to pick the cluster of three lower time frames like the five minutes 15 minutes and 30 minutes but when you are comparing the trend you could always travel from five minutes right up to daily or even weekly monthly it's not really a problem the more matches you get consecutively the better it uh, the better it would, would it be because the clarity of trend and the strength of trend would actually be really really critical before you um, proceed further into analyzing the market or even drawing patterns or anything else okay all right so here for example you have got that appreciation of prices you, you've got uncertainty even on the five minute chart for usd jpy at this moment of time now as you go on to the 15 minute chart it's the same thing and that uncertainty has built up from the five minute chart right down to 15 minutes and then 30 minutes as well and then one hour so as you can see that this is telling you from short to about uh, short term, uh, especially intraday type, uh, as well as up to the one hour chart is just giving you lots of uncertainties hasn't actually broken out yet. So it's a bit too early for you because the market is in doubt. So if you're looking into entering the market, like at this moment of time, even for any time frame that you look at, it's just going to be quite risky for you. Uh, that actually means like it's, it's as though you're sticking your finger into a spinning washing machine. So that is just not a good idea okay for you to do that so at this stage it's the same for trading so here you you want the market to settle down give you a, a better picture a stronger picture of the trend only then you can look into drawing a clearer pattern and your pattern that you draw whether it's geometric pattern or or any other analysis basically would actually be higher probability and lower risk and this is basically what we want because if we enter into high problem high risk and low probability trades what would happen then is that you might not last in the game uh, that long so that actually means that you know it'd be taken out more often than you are winning and that taken out by stop losses and things like that would, wouldn't be uh, a good motivation in psychology for you as well as a trader okay so um, you've got USD JPY right there covered. I'm just going to um, do that here. Um, switch that to the Euro USD because I've got quite a number of questions about Euro USD today among students as well. So let's just look into that. Um, it's also the most traded uh, pair right there. And here, for example, if I go into the one hour chart, you have got that build up momentum. At a glance, you can see that, okay, the bias could be on the upside. Why? Because you have got higher highs and higher lows as well. That's one. Um, number two, you've got uh, all these candles are building up its momentum to the upside, and they're above all three lines. Now, the three lines are splitting open, but not as clear and as strong. Uh, so we could say that it's just building up. Uh, quite well uh, in terms of the um, upward trend. So here I would like to at a glance just draw you a pattern so that I can explain what I have just done. So I could start off one here. What I'm doing now is that let's say if I'm looking into an uptrend, then I would like to look for bullish type pattern. Bullish type pattern will help me sort of make a forecast on how high the prices could actually go up to. So one of the ways is to use um, geometric patterns, but we start off with ABCD type pattern before we convert it into a geometric pattern. So here, for example, um, if I pull the Fibonacci from, you pull your Fibonacci usually from the direction of the trend. So the trend has started from the bottom to the up, to the high right here. So you are pulling your Fibonacci from the bottom to the high as well, okay, here. And I would like to look at that correction fall, has it actually landed on any Fibonacci level? And the minimum should actually be 38.2. And here I would say that, okay, you've got a test right here. Now you've got another point right here and the price pushed up. So I would like to use the 38.2 uh, type Fibonacci ratio. Okay, so I'll take that one there. And I like it when I actually see that the C point has actually uh, touched or found support at either one of that uh, level right there. So here I've got an A here, a B here, and a C. And what I'm actually doing now is I'm trying to make a bit of a forecast to know how far the price could be projected to. And what I do is very simple. You take that AB line that you've just drawn and you project that from the C point, which was just there, right? And that gives you the end of where uh, price for Euro USD could 
B actually reaching towards to based on this pattern right here. So it's very simple, isn't it? You've got an A, B, B, C, and C, D, and that is just a chart pattern, an A, B, C, D, or a lightning bolt type pattern. This is called a bullish A, B, C, D pattern. It's not yet a geometric pattern. Now, the geometric pattern would only be after you've converted it by drawing a single line from A right to the D point right there. So you've got a sharp angle right there, and that is where D could potentially reach okay and if you've actually um entered the the euro usd earlier on thinking that uh let's say you've made a uh, an analysis and you found that three time frames have actually matched and they were strong in uptrend then you want to draw a bullish pattern to actually uh, go into it uh, to trade a buy on the euro usd but where do you actually do that that starting point uh entry um, hence the reason we actually convert that abcd pattern into a geometric pattern which gives you that center area right here the, the intersection between the a to d line and the b to c line gives you that x right there in the middle so that middle uh, area or zone um, is called the centroid that i've just uh, put an under uh, a horizontal line right there and i'm going to change the color to red just to give you a differentiation of the colors okay uh, and I found that, uh, you know, over the years, I've uh, been introduced to this kind of trading. Uh, I've, I've tweaked it uh, from harmonic type patterns into my own type pattern that's called a geometric pattern. So here, for example, I found that this center point that I've just done would, would actually not only give you a hint of where you could actually enter the market, but you need to, of course, tweak that to psychological numbers and things like that. I also found out that, you know, that center point, as, as simple as it is, would actually also give you a, the potential of uh, significant support resistance. So um, automatically, when you follow that red line, you could see that you've got concentration of support, concentration of candles, you've got various support. Um, and let's say you could see a lot of touch points there. You've got a support right there. You've got some resistance right there. Um, as I go on to higher time frame as well and zoom out, I would like to see that significance right there as well. And you've got more support and resistance and concentration of price, a uh, big mover right there as well, and more support right on the dot as well. So that actually have, uh, you know, motivated me to study it deeper, look into many, many charts, thousands of charts, looking at the significance uh, and respond of the, uh, what do you call that, uh, centroid area. So here we are just looking at that okay that uh one hour chart euro usd we're looking at the potential of prices to go to that area right there but this pattern is well and good uh really nice to see the pattern but we have not actually looked into four hour and daily to look at whether or not we've got the strength of trend to the upside because this is what's going to determine whether or not your price could really reach that area right there is the trend the strength of a trend whether the, the the uptrend is getting strong, uh, is, is from strong to stronger or not. That's basically it. Okay, so if we go into the four hour chart right here, you could see that you have got sideways right there, not really nice on the three lines, um, but you've got candles above all three lines. So the two needs to match to give you high probability, low risk. So at this moment, yes, you've only got the candles appreciating and appreciating um, further up or above the three lines, but you've not got the three lines to give you the backup of the strength of the trend. So you could still trade that, but it's going to be you know, uh, it needs to measure, you need to measure your own risk appetite and willing to take the risk or not. Okay, so that's basically, it's really, really important that you do that. So here, for example, if you go into the daily chart, yes, you've got that push to the upside, you've got candles is beginning to found to have found support, and then they are trading upwards. The, the way the three lines are moving are not too bad. Um, if you actually zoom out a little bit, you can see that You've got some good angles, you know, it is picking up to the upside. So the daily chart long term is looking quite good in the euro USD. Um, it's not that the euro is too much. It's not too much of the euro performing really well. It's because of the weakness of the dollar at the moment. Uh, you've got uh, a trade war that is actually going on at this moment of time as we speak. You've got Trump policies on uh, exports, uh, on imports especially. So they are, you know, gearing towards uh, wanting to, uh, you know, 
just put on tariffs at the moment on uh, imports. So now um, there's a trade war going on between the US and the Eurozone, especially with Germany because of German cars, luxury cars, Mercedes, BMWs and all that uh, huge market um, are coming from the States for the Germans. But then um, the Americans are, um, you know, uh, imposing the tariffs and the tariffs are going to really uh, you know, cause uh, the Europeans to retaliate. So there would be some geopolitical factors coming out of there. So there'll be sort of a trade war back and forth kind of thing. So that's actually hurting the position of the U.S. at this moment of time. Uh, and hence the reason because of that relationship thing that is going on globally, that is giving a very big impact on dollar at this moment of time. Okay, and uh, together with that, we've also got unpredictable um, economic, uh, sorry, political situation in Italy with the voting of a, uh, you know, an alternate party as well winning it. Uh, so that kind of thing, sort of uh, giving it that, but that's still not considered by the market as um, too big an impact compared to what's going on in the states, the tariffs and things like that. Okay, because it's it's going to. Uh, sort of really damage lots of global uh, business connections as well between the US and its import and export partners. Okay, all right, there you go. So I've got some question here. Let's just see. Okay, let's see. Oh, we've got um, <clears throat> a question from Paul. Um, that's okay, Paul. You missed Thursday's one. It's no problem. Okay. Hi there, Paul, and you're from Nigeria, brilliant. Um, you've got two questions. One of your question is, if you were to sell the, the dollar versus the yen, USDJPY, considering the psychological number below 10600, which is 10590, correct? Uh, you are looking into, no, once you've actually considered that one level, you're not looking at the other psychological level anymore. You're actually going to be looking into the patterns, okay? So it's it's sort of my style type trading is I look into the pattern to give me the, the end picture of where the TP could actually be um, because once you've actually sold at your 10580, uh, then we are looking at, let's say here, we're still, let's go back to the USDJPY, yeah? Uh, where is the USDJPY? Ah, I think I've replaced that, okay. So, give me a second. Okay, I'll give you a sample. Uh, this one here is AUD uh, USD, let's say, right? But that's got, uh, you know, four decimals after the point. So if I've adjusted my entry, let's say, I'm looking at uh, my exit right there, correct? So let's just change, sorry, USD JPY, perhaps. Let's just do that. Give me a second. Okay. So I've got my USD JPY right there. And let's say we're looking into... Okay, let's do a bit of an analysis uh, based on the psychological number itself, yeah? So here, for example, uh, let's say the price for USD JPY, you have got, it, we're gonna make it really simple. You're, you're looking at 106.01, okay? So 01, let's say, as 01 goes up and up and up, the next psychological number that it would actually bump into first would be 106.20, that is the next one up. But the, the one that's below it is just so close, about one paper, something like that, away from 10600, correct? So what you can do always is to just draw the psychological level that is under it, under the current price, and the psychological level that's above the price, okay? So this is just to make it really simple for you to understand where you are at as a trader with the current price. So where the current price is at, is it actually sandwiched very closely between two psychological numbers, one above and one below. So uh, 105, uh, okay, let's say now we have got, you've got 105, now prices is actually has moved to zero zero, right? So let's say we don't take the zero zero psychological number, but under the zero zero, the next level down as a psychological number would be one zero five eighty, correct? So I'm just putting one below, which is eighty. Okay, that is the psychological level that's under the current price. 
what about above the current price would actually be 10620 okay 10600 uh, as well but it's just too close we'll just take the 20 as well okay so 106 just like a safe type level in terms of looking at the the visually and looking at the current price and right in between sandwich between the two psychological levels okay so here it would keep you safer in knowing that if you're considering a buy trade trade it's probably best for you to consider it once price has actually gone through pierces through the top psychological level and heading upwards but as it heads upwards it needs to also be above all three lines all three exponential moving average then it would signal the uh, bullish momentum or bullishness of the trend if for example it goes lower and lower and it pierces through this um, lowest line to the downside that would give you the hint of a bearish uh, momentum or bearish trend and once it's under it and it's also under under that psychological level and further away and below the three lines under all three lines that means it's giving you the hint of a bearish trend i hope that's clear so what you can actually do very simply is always look at the price now and line up one psychological level at the very top of the current price and one at the bottom just closely not really far away okay so like that it will give you a visual effect and knowing that your current price at this moment of time is not giving you a good hint to enter the market because it's sandwiched in between two psychological levels it need to it needs to break out of it and then give you a better clearer trend direction that it wishes to take okay we follow the market we cannot we need to follow the logic of the market not our logic in trading the forex market okay so i hope that's clear uh for you paul is that does that actually make sense yes because you are only adjusting it once okay and then uh you are looking into uh what do you call that adjusting it uh, based on the tp like for example here i'll give you an example we go on to AUD USD, let's say right uh, this is a current trade that has already hit its tp so i've drawn that ab equals cd and and uh, i've drawn the center point and i've actually uh, wanting to enter above that i have entered basically uh, this was a very good trade uh, you know it's a successful abcd pattern that gave me about uh, almost 50 pips right there okay so let's say i've marked that center point centroid ideal entry to be at that center area of 7774 correct so let's take the four decimal places so i i'll take it at 7774 and i i would focus on the number 74 let's say i wanted to to buy i wouldn't buy at 7774 because as prices go up it would actually be close to the 80 psychological number. So if you want to buy, you need to buy above the psychological number. If you want to sell, you need to sell below the psychological number by at least 10 pips, okay? So if I want to buy, I need to buy uh, at least 10 pips, at 10 pips above at least of the psychological level. So here, the closest psychological level that I will bump to as price goes up, okay, from 7742, no, 7774 as it goes up it goes to 75 and 6 and 7 so on and so forth and, but it will reach the closest psychological level at 7780 correct so 80 is not where i would like to buy and that is the psych closest psychological level so i need to plus 10 pips so 80 plus 10 is 90 so my ideal buying price would only be i'll just give you this as a sample so you get an idea of how I enter with psychological levels, 1.7790, right? So once I've done this adjustment, I shouldn't worry about 10 pips above this 90 will be 7800. No, I, do, I don't need to worry about that, okay? Um, because you are now based on, you only adjust the psychological level only once in terms of your entry price, okay? Now you're aiming it with this pattern, you're aiming it here okay so uh, because you've used the a b right there equals c d correct okay so that has actually given a projection possible reach of aud usd to that level right there and it pointed out to 7823 7823 wouldn't be a level i will take my profit why 7823 
is just too close to 20 because I would reach the 20 psychological number first before I reach 7, 8, 23. But I need to exit, you need to exit before price reaches the psychological level. What was the psychological level right there closest to your projected price? It's 78, 20. Now, 20 is not where I would like my TP to be. I need it to be under 10 pips under the 20. That means 10 pips before the 23, not 23. 20 okay so 10 pips before the 20 so 20 minus 10 is 10 so 7 8 10 would be my ideal and uh, exit or tp area okay so this is based on the principles of psychological numbers so one uh, point not one zero point zero point seven eight ten so you're just adjusting that as simple as that and you would have exited at 7, 8, 10, you would have entered at 7, 7, 90. Now, what about your stop loss? Now, stop loss um, with the principles or methods of geometric trading, what I have actually simplified it to be is just using your Fibonacci. So when you pull your Fibonacci from your A to B, remember, A to B of the pattern, you are looking at 67%, and your 67% is right here. And this would give you a ready stop loss level. So your stop loss level based on the pattern on this simple ABCD lightning bolt or this ABCD uh, tight pattern, bullish or bearish, is 67% of A to B. And it would be the same. It would be the same for you whether it is a downtrend type pattern or an uptrend pattern. Okay, so 67%, that would be your stop loss right there. So your stop loss, my stop loss would have been right there, okay? 67% of A to B, okay? Hope you guys got that. That's your SL right there. So this is based on a previous uh, trade, okay? Just just now, just today. So that has actually reached the uh, TP really nicely, generated quite a good number of pips as well. And uh, it was generated by the strength of the AUD reaching uh, it's TP, um, AUD's factors, okay? All right, so uh, Paul, that's clear, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Uh, 7790, uh, 77, yes, uh, 1.7790 was the uh, area of uh, buy entry, 0 0.7790, you are right. I think that was a typo right there. Sorry about that, so let me just adjust that very quickly. Zero point, yeah. Just remove that. There you go. Okay, that should make better sense. All right then, AUD USD. Now with um, let's just see whether we've got more samples. I've also got um, you know various uh, pattern types uh, here. So um, I do share with uh, most of the uh, mo most uh, Tickmill. Um, attendees of a webinar uh, where I actually post um, daily um, what do you call that geometric trade ideas as well and that's on um, epicsgeometry.com uh, uh, I'll just type that one there so you can easily uh, ask questions as well now with regards to with regards to um, uh, to uh, questions uh, you can always just email it to Chris okay at tickmail dot com and uh, Chris would then uh, forward all um, queries uh, or anything that you're not sure about uh, whether it's got to do with what we've discussed uh, here today as well as uh, any uh, what do you call that questions on your account or uh, trading platform of Tickmill. Okay so that's basically it. Now here I have got let me see you got that now Paul brilliant um, okay the last line, uh, Evans, uh, where do you actually draw it from? You mean Evans, is that correct? The last line, the last line, you mean the projection of where? Okay, we can always go back. Let's see. Um, AUD, USD, it was. So this last line here, um, the last line is when you actually attach your A to the D to find your entry, ideal entry area right here. But it should be, if you are buying, you're buying above that, that center point. We call it the centroid. Uh, if you're talking about your D, you know, how you project that area right there, you're taking your AB's length to equal your 
CD length right there to actually project that. Does that make sense? Is it clearer now? You guys okay? All right. Does that make um, sense, Evan? Yeah, is that all right? Okay, there we go. So uh, we've got that uh, done now. Now AUD USD, I mean, we're just waiting for that, uh, you know, download for the moment, but uh, I want to share with you guys on a couple of other trade ideas that I have. So here, for example, uh, let's just go on to, yeah, let's give me a second, guys, you've got questions. Um, Evans, uh, you're saying that uh, before the bullish candles, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, uh, I, I mean, let me just go back to the, give me a second, Evan. It doesn't matter which actually candle, it's actually the, the, the low, yeah, the low or the high, yeah. So we've got a low right here, okay, got the low right here. And it, it went up to this high right here and made a correction to this low right here. And that's it. Uh, we don't really look into the candles or anything like that. But most importantly is to look at where the C point has actually landed as well. So if I pull my A to B, I need to look at the C point needs to land at any one of the Fibonacci levels or Fibonacci ratios. Okay, but it need to um, be landing at the minimum of 38.2 okay and the maximum of 88.6 percent but here it is it landed at 50 50 percent so that's good enough um, and you just want a majority of candles or it's just you know um sort of landed onto very close to the fibonacci level and that's that's enough yeah we don't really need to analyze this is really not necessary to analyze deeply the candles at this stage if you're trading with uh, patterns okay because the patterns um, they are price patterns, so they have actually factored in the movement of prices, uh, and the prices comes to you, price action comes to you in, a, in the form of shapes. So you've got triangles, you know, and squares, basically, because once you've actually have got um, the, the, the lines attached like this, this would then give you um, a geometric type shape, and it's made up of four triangles, let's say. Uh, it could also be, uh, you know, a diamond type shape with four angles, as well, sort of like a trapezium type, uh, sorry, like, a, uh, you know, kind of square type. But then when you extend, basically, um, the lines, uh, let's say, for example, here, you're extending it like here, for example, and you do the right drawings based on Fibonacci. And this is actually a triangle with 90 degrees right here. And that itself would give you uh, sort of um, a rectangle that would give you some price action as well so if i demonstrate this to you maybe you'll get a bit of an idea um, give me a second guys if i get rid of that let's say and i get rid of that okay and we have got some squares right here right and that made up of the triangle right there but then if i if i cross this one right here okay and you cross this one for example right there that middle area right here could be very significant as well okay so if i do that and i can see that it's price action here as well okay you've got uh, right on the dot of that is this area here let's say and a couple of things so it is really important to look at that but you know it's not necessary for us to really go into all these drawings um, but to systematically just look into an ABCD pattern would actually be ideal so you are looking at uh, let me just get rid of that okay and get rid of that there so that is the pattern that you would like to look at is a simple ABCD pattern but inside that kind of pattern um, it would actually factor in all kind of shapes mainly triangles and squares okay so this is basically it so we want to focus on um, converting this simple ABCD pattern into a geometric shape which is A to D okay so that itself would actually give you a very good uh, sort of um, idea 
of how it could be. So um, for, for you guys who are actually really interested in the geometric shape uh, and in the geometric trading uh, pattern, geometric patterns, uh, you can join me on Thursday. I'll do a tutorial on Thursday, more um, digging deep into the geometric patterns so you can get an idea of how we combine all that with what we have actually taught so far in the uh, previous uh, three Thursdays. Okay, and we combine all that together. Okay, so hope that's clear for you, Evans. Is that okay? Or uh, you've got more questions? Okay, now what's what's really important is when you choose a low and you pull your A to B, uh, the C point is really important. That means the C point uh, shouldn't actually float between two Fibonacci ratio. It should actually land onto one Fibonacci ratio at least and a minimum of 38.2% Fibonacci. Um, Sheila, hope, uh, hopefully I, I'm going to be releasing a book soon. Uh, it's just that uh, it's all self sort of discovered uh, type method uh, here. Uh, you won't be able to find it uh, online, um, uh, but you'll be able to find some uh, some uh, you know ebooks that I've got uh, as well as uh, references on uh, fxgeometry.com. So uh, you could kindly go on to um, www.fxgeometry, okay, fxgeometry.com, uh, and uh, basically this is where you could actually find more information, okay, so there you go, I've sent that through, so uh, also do check out the, um, you know, uh, the follow-up of this webinar by by uh, Tickmill um, uh, in terms of the analysis that I'm done, and they usually get posted, you know, as uh, daily trade ideas on FX Geometry on the Geometric Analysis section under Market Insights. Okay, so I do tie them up uh, with all the presentations that I have for Tickmill uh, to actually have it uh, there so that you can actually read about it and have uh, daily trade ideas as well to be shared and guided upon. Okay. All right, but uh, for any questions at all, including, uh, you know, questions about the, what I've uh, said, uh, what I've mentioned today as well, do email it to chris at tickmill.co.uk. I think it's uh, chris at tickmill.com. You could try it or .co uk. All right, guys. Okay, um, Sheila, another thing, uh, with regards to books, you can always look up um, a harmonic patterns uh, they are actually quite close but i've tweaked it and simplified um, the drawing of patterns so anybody of any age group could actually draw it uh, so hence the reason i have used references of uh, geometric patterns uh, of harmonic patterns and i've tweaked it into simplified geometric patterns instead okay and the use of triangles and squares okay guys um have you guys got any questions with regards to pairs that you would wish to see uh, any uh, instruments that you would wish for me to actually uh, maybe guide you on to draw uh, patterns on. We've also got uh, the GBP, um, the GBP uh, dot uh, GBP versus the Zar, the South African rent as well. We have seen that we've got an ABCD pattern, but this is an advanced. Uh, we call it a Z-like pattern or a five dash zero pattern. We've got geometric traits with it as well. So uh, what we're expecting is uh, a little bit of a uh, appreciation of price very soon because it has ended at the D area right here. So we're looking at a possible uh, sort of uh, movement to the upside uh, at this level here at 1643. Okay, 1643.116. Uh, okay, so I take the last digit out and I look at 4316 and look at the last two digit of 4316, which is 16 uh, to tweak the psychological levels. NZDCAD. Okay, let's look at uh, NZDCAD. Um, it's quite an interesting one. Yeah. So let's look at. NZDCAD, that is, yeah. Give me a second. There we go. We'll start off with the one hour chart first. Okay. Um, Tlali. We're looking to NZDCAD. Now, NZDCAD at a glance, when you look into it, uh, you see the way the three lines are moving upwards. Um, they are separated from one another. Really good sign together with the candles quite far above uh, from the three lines. And it's uh, pointing towards the sky and it's got a nice angle as well. So the bias is to the upside NZDCAD. It's got a strong trend to the upside. Okay. So here, for example, we are looking at when we zoom in, 
we see that the strength to the upside we got dominance by uh, bullish candles as well let us just compare now uh, with the four hour and the daily to see how strong that trend could actually last as well so here you still have that same that similar sort of um, uh, trend to the upside and then we go to the daily chart as well and we see that yes it's uh, looking not too bad on the daily as well and uh, but it's, you've got a bit of a sort of um, uh, what do you call that um, entanglement going on there for the long term which is the daily so it's telling you that okay you've got to watch out for certain levels so if I go into the four hours let's just draw out your risk area first okay as you can see it's starting to weaken now right on the four hour chart so what do you do is that when you look uh, when you look at the price of the candle now I mean price uh, of NZDCAD now uh, as the price uh, you know moves up now as it moves up you are interested to be a buyer correct because you would like to know how much more would it actually move up to and if you are the buyer you need to look out for the sellers that means uh, it at which angle at which uh, level sorry at which level or at which zone the sellers can actually uh, take you out of the market so what you need to do is you need to look left now looking left is one of the most important thing when you're actually trading when you look left you want to look at a very significant resistance level in the past in the past okay so you just scroll you know take your time scroll you don't need to rush at, at this point because you want to make uh, you know a good clear decision now here as you can see at this level here you could see that price now this horizontal little line is the price now and it's pointing towards previous line previous resistance where prices has actually fallen quite a lot significantly it took some time and it fallen about you know almost 700 pips at 680 pips or so okay so that is quite a significant drop at some moment of time and when was that that was actually uh, sometime in July uh, last year okay so that was a significant drop so you need to respect that area right there as a potential resistance zone so what you do is you draw two lines uh, for a resistance zone you draw one on the highest body of the candle and one on that is based on that family of candles right up there that the, the high area okay and one more line right at the very top that actually means the highest uh, wick okay so the highest wick and the highest body of the candle then you've got two lines once you've got two lines then you're actually safer to look at that line um, these lines as your potential resistance zone okay so what that needs what what I mean by that is you need prices to go past and through this two lines and go above the psychological level as well so that the top line right there okay it's at 9416 correct so 9416 we we get the last digit out now 9416 focus on the 16 focus on 16 alone as one six goes up one six goes up to 17 18 and all that it'll bump into the closest psychological number which is nine for 20 so 20 is your closest psychological number up above okay so it needs to pass through the 20 now look at where it stopped here highest wick highest wick stop at 94 30 okay so what happens is that you need prices to go above 94 20 up and up at least about 10 pips which leads you to 94 30 and above so once prices has gone up again pierces through these two lines goes up and go above 94.30 then you could actually look into more bias to the upside at this stage it's prices still trapped uh, so it needs to you know show you that it's going towards a downtrend only after it goes under 94.00 so under 94.00 towards 93.90 then you've got more to the downside at this moment of time we have got a significant resistance zone right here so for those who are thinking of buying now or buying anytime soon before prices goes out of this blue zone it's really very very risky okay so it is still showing you sort of a uptrend type momentum but if you want to write the uptrend you need to buy it at the right price so you need prices to actually go above 9430 and above okay but as it goes 9430 and above it would meet the 9450 as well so it's a really really important for you to actually look into significant significant levels to the left okay so as you can see look at what's going on here as you line up the three lines significant uh, resistance you have got another significant resistance all the way through here 
right so you see how price have actually dropped all the way down now that is a very significant drop from this point where prices is at at the moment right down to the low here that's 700 plus pips okay in the past so it took a lot of time as well and it went down that significantly and now price is exactly at that zone so you see there's like a cup like handle right there like a cup like pattern as well so here i think it's probably best for you to wait and look at what's going on because this kind of cup like pattern uh, as well might communicate uh, or communicate hints that it might want to fall at least 50% of this this uh, length right here okay so not yet because uh, what happens is that in a cup like type handle here it would most probably let me just see um, this is like a sort of cup like handle a uh, cup like pattern okay so what usually happens is that um, It'll, it'll meet up at this area right here, which is the mouth of the cup. The blue zone is like the mouth of the cup. So what happens is that if it does actually depreciate further and has a reason to come down, uh, it usually comes down to form the handle of the cup. And the handle of the cup is usually 50% uh, of this, uh, what do you call that, um, the base, the 50% of the base from the base to the uh, mouth of the cup, so somewhere in the middle. So what you do is that you take your Fibonacci uh, and you pull it from this uh, bottom of the cup, the lowest level here, right up to the top area there. Once once prices have started to drop, so once prices have started to drop, then it would it would then mean that if it start to drop and go under the 94.00 and then towards 93.50 uh, and then lower, that actually means that it, the market wants to form that, that handle of this cup. Uh, if not, then this cup and handle would actually just fail and then it would just you know go up much more. But then it does look like there may be a potential of a cup and handle type and you can always uh, type onto Google cup and handle pattern and you can see there's a lot of examples right there it gives you all the criteria as well so this might actually happen but what I usually do is in a cup uh, pattern like this you know I would then trade the ABCD like that okay another ABCD here perhaps another ABCD here so there are many ABCDs inside the right side of the cup as well so that's basically it and then I would then uh, you know, combine your geometric type pattern on there. Yes, um, of course, uh, we could actually get, the, you could get the recording. You would need to, uh, you know, uh, contact your account manager at mail to actually request for your recording. And uh, we, uh, all the, all the videos are recorded. All the webinars are recorded. Yes. Okay, is that uh, clear, Ali? Yeah, does that give you a bit of an insight of um, your current NZDCAD? position for your trade is that okay all right most welcome Talali. good so yeah that's just giving you that kind of hint you know um, but you need to look at the prices as well and just to make sure that it has gone past and above the psychological level at least by 10 pips to give you hints of the upside type movement or an ideal buy type price okay all right i think uh that's all I've got for you guys. Any other questions, guys? Have you, have you guys got any questions for me? Anything that's not really clear? Don't worry about um, the, uh, you know, uh, sort of the approach and the techniques or methods. Uh, we can always, uh, we will be co covering those, as I mentioned, this coming Thursday on the geometric patterns itself um, on Thursday at the same time. So Thursdays would be tutorials day. So uh, you could always just, um, you know, uh, join that on Thursday uh, and, uh or contact your account manager if you've missed that. And uh, we will focus on the topic itself. Okay. All right. Hi there, Evans. Yes, uh, because the, the thing about the, um, the courses especially is that um, I would be asking you, uh, you know, a 20 question quiz as well for you to be eligible to get the certificate from Tickmill. Uh, and uh, basically for the course, so we're talking about the course uh, on Thursdays. Uh, what happens is that once you're a client of uh, Tickmill, you, you are eligible to get all the recordings and uh, 
the certificate as well once you have passed at least 80% of the quiz questions. So um, this uh, coming Thursday would be the third um, the third uh, session. So the course would be four sessions. So once uh, next week we have the last uh, session Thursday, then the following Thursday I'll be uh, will be sending out the quiz questions. And once you have uh, fill up, you know, answered all the quiz questions, you've got a passing mark of eighty percent. You're able to get all the recordings, eligible for all the recordings, as well as the certificate to be sent to you as well. Uh, once you're a client with uh, Tickmill, okay. Yes. Hi there, Andila. You can uh, email it to Chris, C-H-R-I-S, at tickmail.com. Yeah. So I'm just sending that to you guys again. And uh, please email Chris at tickmail, C-H-R-I-S, at tickmail, T-I-C-K-M-I-L-L.com, and request for your uh, for your videos. And you can always, uh, you know, um, get guidance from Chris as well with regards to account types, uh, that you would wish to open with, uh, as well as, uh, you know, any, anything that's uh, concerning account or anything has got to do with Tignal. Okay. All right. Okay, there, guys. Um, I think that's all I've got for you guys. I really appreciate your time in joining me um, at this time. And uh, we'll be seeing you uh, on Thursday. For those of you guys interested for the course, I mean, we'll be going on to uh, chart uh, uh, geometric patterns, uh, going through the centroid, drawing loads of patterns uh, live on the market, and going through the trade plan as well. So uh, do join me on Thursday, uh, this coming Thursday, and uh, we will be going through that. And uh, also for Tuesday's live, uh, the Tuesday uh, for... Um, Market Outlook Live, you can join me on Tuesdays. Thursdays are for courses, okay? Part of the course program. Okay there, guys. Um, yes, we would actually come up with more. Uh, what you could do is that, uh, you know, send your request to uh, chris at tickmill.com if you have got uh, suggestions of topics as well. And we are trying to gather up topics that is mostly in demand uh, for you guys to help you guys in trading. So uh, do email um, uh, chris at tickmill.com. Express your interest in having more courses uh, by myself and also uh, suggested topics. Okay, guys. All right there, guys. You guys have been wonderful um, to join me uh, tonight in this webinar. I would like to say a big thank you uh, to you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys again Tuesdays for the live market and Thursdays for the part of the courses. Okay, guys. Once again, thank you and have a, have a lovely night. Bye-bye.